Now that we're somewhat familiar with drawing in grease pencil, let's expand our horizons just a little. It comes as no surprise that we've been drawing in a 3D environment all along, but because we've been looking through the plane of the camera, it appears as though we've only been working in two dimensions. Drawing in 3D space can get messy and has its uses, which is why it's important to know that there are tools to help place your strokes and shapes should you wish to expand your skills and create some more interesting work. In this lesson, I'll focus on stroke placement. Now by default, we've been drawing in relation to the grease pencil object's own origin point. I've set up a scene here where the stroke object is offset from the center, the 3D cursor has been placed in an arbitrary point, and I've imported a low poly head. We'll first set our stroke placement to origin and draw a stroke. Now I'll change the stroke placement to 3D cursor. From this vantage point, it looks like it's all on the same plane, but if we swing around to observe the 3D environment in perspective mode, you can see the difference. We'll look through the camera once more and set our stroke placement to surface. We get another setting when we set this to surface. It's called offset, and by default, it's set to 0.15 this is the unit distance the stroke will be drawn offset from the object's surface. So I'm going to reduce this to about a 0.01. I don't want it exactly at zero because you'll definitely see how it intersects with the surface of the object. And we don't exactly want that. I'll sketch some lines on the head. And now I'll swing back into perspective mode. And you'll see that the drawn strokes appear as though they're shrink wrapped to the head. In this mode, we could rotate and continue to draw on this surface, and we could draw lines wherever we want on the head. And this is really cool to get sort of like a, a toony um, line drawn effect over a 3D object. The stroke option will snap stroke points to any other grease pencil strokes. When it is set to all points, any new stroke drawn will adhere to the nearest points of existing strokes. When you set it to endpoint and you draw a stroke, it will interpolate the positioning of the stroke between the first and last points that the new stroke crosses. First point will take it from the first point that it crosses and orient it to your view plane. Drawing planes will be the subject of our next lesson. While the stroke placement can allow us to set a specific origin for the strokes. The drawing plane can align strokes to front, side, or top views, to however the cursor is oriented, or to however you are viewing the 3D viewport. I'll swing into 3D view and select the view plane. I'll draw some strokes here. Then I will rotate my view and draw some more strokes. I'll do this again, and you'll see that each time the strokes are projected to match our current view, but as we rotate, we can see where they're actually existing in 3D space. This is a very arbitrary system of drawing. Now, normally our view plane has been through our camera, and that makes a lot of sense because we'll ultimately be rendering from our camera view, and it should look good at render time. However, we can also lock our drawing planes to a front, side, or top orientation. I'm going to set my stroke placement to 3D cursor. And then I'm going to move my 3D cursor down here as if we were going to draw a floor. And looking through my camera, I'm going to set my drawing plane to top or the XY plane. Now when I draw, all of my strokes will be locked to this XY plane. I'll now set my cursor off to the side here and set my drawing plane to YZ. And I'll proceed to draw something like a wall. Now this will work in camera view because we can actually see as we're building this room or even in 3D space. So if I set my 3D cursor to an opposite wall and keeping my drawing plane to YZ, the stroke is placed 
where the cursor is. I'm going to swing into 3D space and place my cursor at somewhere where the back wall should be. I'll change my drawing plane to XZ, that's the front view. Now I can draw in 3D perspective view or through the camera if it gets a little bit too confusing. And this is where I can draw this final back wall. And now we've got something that resembles a room. Now the last setting on drawing plane is cursor. And this will align to however your cursor is oriented. So for instance, I could swing around to side view, place my cursor, and then in perspective view, when I draw, it will orient it to the ZY plane. Now I can swing around into another orthographic view, place my cursor again to orient the cursor, and then continue to draw in this way. Wherever the cursor is placed, and whatever orientation it has, the strokes will adopt this. Now this takes a lot of getting used to, and so this is more like an intermediate drawing tool, if you will. So you can already see how in combination, these two tools can allow you to draw very quickly in 3D space. We've touched on guides in a previous lesson, but let's take a deeper dive into guides and maybe combine them with the tools we've just learned about. We've already used the circular guide to create a bubble. And we'd set the reference to cursor. But you can set this to a custom location or even an object. If you want to draw out concentric circles, you can set a unit between which each concentric circle will be spaced out. Radial allows you to draw lines which radiate out from a central point. And with a drawing tablet, the pressure sensitivity should allow you to draw lines that go from thick to thin very quickly. There is a snapping option here by which you can set an angle and each of the lines will be spaced out along a clearly defined angle around the radius. Want to draw parallel lines quickly? Set the guides to parallel and set your angle to whatever angle you need them drawn at. Spacing works here as well. It will only draw lines evenly spaced by that set unit. Grid will only draw vertical and horizontal lines. Whereas isometric will draw lines much like grid, but you can set the angle for your isometric view. The isometric view also incorporates vertical lines. All of the tools you've just seen can be used for specific purposes or in conjunction with each other. I encourage you to have a play around and find ways to use a combination of these tools that suits you. There are going to be times when things just don't go right. And this is when cleanup is necessary. Here are some of my most frequently encountered issues and how I fix them. Sometimes you want to join two selected points, but join doesn't seem to want to behave. The join tool looks for the shortest distance between two points instead of your selection. There is an alternative, and that is to use merge. However, grease pencil creates an extra detached stroke between selected points. If you wish to create a consistent unbroken stroke, after merging, open the Merge dialog. Select Dissolve Points. Then select all the points that you wish to join and hit Control J to join. The Cutter tool in Draw Mode looks for consistent segments which are intersected with other strokes. And it requires that enough geometry is present to perform this. Now occasionally, you might be seeing only part of a segment removed. Or you select something to be cut away and a whole bunch of the curve goes missing. A segment will end at either a start or end point. So if both these points are inside the segment that you wish to cut, 
you just need to lasso the remaining segment, and this should rectify the problem. If a large segment goes missing, and you didn't want this deleted, it is probably because there was not enough geometry where the strokes intersect. This can be remedied by selecting one or all of the strokes and subdividing until there is. Sometimes you might notice some points are floating around from previous operations. Sometimes these points or segments are invisible because their stroke width is very low or even zero. This can cause problems with future tasks such as filling or adding effects. To remove these extra artifacts, go into edit mode, select everything, then go to the Grease Pencil menu, Clean Up, Delete Loose Points. Now if some are not deleted, this is because they fall on or below the Clean Loose Points limit. You just have to increase this until they are removed. This one happens quite often, and it occurs when a shape outline crosses itself. Sometimes there's no solution but to redraw it and try not to get your lines to cross too much. But occasionally, smoothing, subdividing, or just moving a point or two in edit mode might do the trick. All of a sudden you notice that the lines that you've been drawing seem all over the place when you swing into perspective mode. They could be on different planes, or angled in different directions. This is going to cause problems when using fills or modifiers or even effects. However, this is a very easy fix. First, set your cursor to where you require all the points to be aligned. Now, look through your camera, go into edit mode. Then, under the grease pencil menu, clean up, select reproject strokes. And then reproject to view. This will align all the points to the view plane in line with the position of the cursor. Now this is a very short and by no means definitive list. Some of these issues might be addressed in upcoming releases, but most, if not all, are important to look out for as they will inform how you create strokes and shapes in the future by knowing what situations to avoid.